tall, dark, handsome man riding on a horse and sweeping me away and taking me away from this life. Who Mr. Right is? I would say Sahil is. Pehli baar usko dekha, one flash of lightning, aur main samaj gaya ki rehna hai uske dil mein. There was this boy who I think half the school had a crush on. The funny thing is I never got down to telling him. He would get married and I would have his children and I was committed to him at 16. Girl with tinted glasses who thought ki haath abhi haath pakle mat shaadi karna hai. Do you even know what a heartbreak is? You feel like you're dead. थोड़ी ना बताए जीत के आएगी बस अभी लगी है क्या हो गया इसको तो पढ़ना था Well, we have this today, gorgeous Adia Mirza, whose next film, Love Breakup, Zindagi, is releasing shortly. Play, you're having you back on Bollywood Angama, first of all. Thank you. Love still exists, you know. वो गायब नहीं हो गया. We uh, we broke up. Why? I've got a slightly more perfect option. Ko pehchan liya na na. Being single. <laughs> I had a. question for some time at times do you feel tired of just getting these compliments about your beauty and all ethereal beauty i don't think any woman would ever woman be tired yeah. it's always nice to be told you look good i think most of the time people don't say it because they assume that a person is ah, being told too much good. it's not that very often and i enjoy yeah. it every time it comes my way in fact i was just seeing the promos of 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 love breakups in the yeah i think you're looking fantastic in, in in the promos and all thank you how do you manage to just look so good all the time that must be tough it's work <laughs> okay no it's many things that i influence the way you you look on screen when you start out you're raw mm. you you don't quite understand what works for you what doesn't work for you sure. i think along the way you discover uh the things that work for you the way an actress or an actor looks on screen is not just their own individual input it is everything else that combines to make you look the way you sure. do so it's the wardrobe it's the makeup it's the hair it's the dop it's the light so it's it's many things that collectively make you look the way you do sure but at the same time i think uh, what, what what do you eat and what is your workout regimen like that is very crucial as well of course it is uh, but i think above all it is how what you feel uh, i i'm a big believer that uh, what you're feeling inside reflects on your face and in your personality if you uh, you know you hold grudges there's malice there's negativity or you 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 dwell in a moment too much a moment that is not happy yeah. uh too much then it starts showing on your face i'm like a child i i get over a bad emotion very quickly and i move on and i'm i'm like an eternal optimist i'm constantly looking at the brighter side of things and i think that reflects in the way i look then we were at one of the events of i am she with sushmita sen and you were present over there as well i think the kind of uh, camaraderie that you shared with sushmita was, was, was something you generally don't see two actresses praising each other and just gelling so well uh, with each other i share that with quite a few people yeah. and i think it happens because i'm not insecure and i'm not competing with anyone i appreciate my colleagues for their strengths and i respect those strengths sure. i never look at them and say oh you know they have that i don't have it It's never that and I think when you feel so re- receptive and open towards everything it aids or it helps build stronger bridges and stronger friendships so whether it's Bipasha or Lara or Sushmita or Vidya these people are people I genuinely respect and I love for everything that they do What does what does love mean to you Love is life It is that one universal emotion that I think uh, makes everyone feel alive. It is uh, something that nobody can do without. It is a feeling that uh, gives you a great strength and motivation and makes you feel like you belong. I saw one of the articles today in Hindustan Times and you admitted about your your relationship with with, with Sahil Sangha the director of the film as well. How is it like is he the man that you've been looking for any ideal parameters? Let me put it simply. Uh I think for a long time people asked me who Mr. Wright is. 
I would say Sahil is. I think there are many qualities that are transient. You can admire a man for his power, for his um, material wealth, for his ability to uh, walk into a room and command the space. But I think the qualities that I admire Sahil for are his innate ability to make everyone like him. He's a very likable person. And he's a very honest person. You can sense his sincerity and his honesty in your first interaction yeah, with him. Right. He's a very straight up, normal, grounded, rooted person. Quite a family guy as well. We were just speaking to him and he was saying that after this, he's going to Delhi and spend some time with his nephews and all. He's very rooted. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always said that when you marry a man, you just don't marry a man, you marry his family. Mm -hmm. uh, and he marries yours. And my mum loves him, you know, and I think it's not just what you feel for an individual, but what everybody around you feels for him is what, you know, adds up to making you admire him so much more. So when the crew loves him and respects him, the, my colleagues love him and respect him, when his family loves him and respects him, or mine does, it makes me admire him so much more. And I think that is the quality of uh, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Your film is about love breakups in the game. We'll try and not take the traditional way out. Just talking about the film, the music and stuff like that. We'll talk about that maybe later. Tell us something about uh, the idea of love when you were growing up, like say in, 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 in teenage and all. What was it? A lot of um, boys trying to propose you and stuff. I'm, I'm sure it must have happened. I went to a co-educational school. Mm -hmm. So That was in Hyderabad? In Hyderabad. Right. What's interesting about going to a co-ed school is that as soon as children hit teenage years, actually by the time you're 12, 13, there's a lot of ragging that starts. You're okay. constantly teased with someone, your classmates start thinking that, you know, who by chance or in passing has mentioned that they sure. like you or they have a crush on you and then you've yeah, just yeah. had it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're in for big trouble. So I think for the longest time in school, you're just fighting the fact that there could be someone out there who you have a crush on or who has a crush on you. Sure. You're avoiding the person and you're avoiding every scenario to be seen in the same place as that person. So if you're playing TT, and the person who you're being teased with is in the TT room, I would take the other route out. Of course, Rakhi would be very funny because as soon as Raksha Bandhan ah, would come along, yeah. the girls in the class would bring this big packet of Rakhis yeah. <laughs> to tie it to all the boys in the class. So it was hilarious. I think uh, it's very, it's fun when you're growing up. My idea of love when I was younger was bookish. I think it was fairy tale. It was visions of this tall, dark, handsome man riding on a horse and sweeping me away and taking me away from this life. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, I think all little girls go through that. They are all inspired by the fairy tales that they read and the books that they read and their idea or perception of love. But but still, you have you have not uh, told us like in clarity. Me, kab aisa chhua tha jab when you really felt that you know you know we were discussing it with Zaya that ke chemistry happens. You know. The first time I felt butterflies in my stomach mm. and my hands trembled when I was around someone was I think when I was in class nine eight. There was this boy who was who I think half the school had a crush on. He was tall, he was athletic, he was very good at everything he did. I would actually look forward to hitting the assembly line in the morning and finding a place that was right behind, like close to him, because he was one grade higher than us. So okay. the lines of the classes are one after the other. You were other. in eighth and he was in ninth. Yeah, okay. so his line was right next to mine. I would find a way to be in his vicinity. The funny thing is, I never got down to telling him. What okay, it was like an infatuation primarily, one-sided. Crush okay. is always like that. But when was it that, that you that you actually ended up telling the person that, that you really, you know, and, and, and he reciprocated? Has it happened? Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I was about 16. Okay. And uh, we all were in a big group and we, uh, summer holidays were spent together. We were about eight friends sure. and uh, one of the boys uh, I had a big crush on and I think he had a crush on me much before that right. and uh, it was really sweet because he was in boarding school and he'd write me these long letters with different colored ink pens mm. <laughs> and I would look at them and say my god he loves me so much he's taken yeah, the trouble know. of those writing kind of to me happen. those kind of things happen <laughs> you've done them Faridur. I have not but uh, I've seen other people doing it no one has done for me but I've seen other people doing it you know it's a lot of people I've seen that happening. 
yeah you know I, I, my friends have done it in fact i don't make me confess to things i shouldn't be but uh, we've someone all been it? stupid someone has done it for you i've done it people have done it a blood still like, i blood. haven't written with blood okay. but uh, i have received letters with blood and i think sure. it's insane when was it after after becoming an actress before that after became becoming an actress i have received a few but uh, when i was in college i got a few letters like that okay and it freaked me out any fans that have send you uh, any letters that have really they have uh, displayed their emotions in a very very pious manner you know fans can be very very um, you know, uh, devoted firstly i'm amazed at the amount that a fan puts into mm. reaching out to an actor yes. that he admires or she admires whether it is keeping clippings of my pictures from my first film till my current pictures mm. and these are people from small villages in india who write these letters in hindi who quote my dialogues from films who stick pictures of me over the years and they write the letter through the dialogues of the film so ah, it starts right. with you know pehli baar usko dekha one flash of lightning aur main samajh gaya ki rehna hai uske dil mein so it starts like that and it's just it's amazing the amount of effort people put into just reaching out to people they admire it's amazing that is one aspect of the fan but i'm talking about any male fan who has sent you any any letters and you have felt that ha matlab kahin na kahin ye aadmi genuinely aapse mohabbat karta hai aise kafi log hain kafi hue hain anything that has stood out maybe and, and you felt like meeting that person or you know there are lots of letters i have received from older people uh, senior people people in their 50s 60s retired people who have written with such grace and written such honest things to me they write about when they hear me speak or they watch my interviews they speak about how they admire my personality and you know that that is something that is so wonderful and i really cherish those letters and i think my god you know ye ye buzurg hain inke bacche honge you know inke shayad uh, grandchildren bhi honge for a man of that age to admire you and to make the effort to write to you and say such wonderful things that is a real it's it's beautiful when younger men do it sometimes you think now we have platforms like twitter and you know so the accessibility has increased and you have to see the things some people say it's quite funny actually i'm quite naughty what i do sometimes is i go to that person's tweets and i check who all they've tweeted I and i see what all they've written to different people so okay. the funny thing is sometimes you discover that the same so line that they're using for you <laughs> they're losing they're using for 10 other people right. and it's cute because you never know who may reply exactly <laughs> Primarily, you're saying that um, getting getting mails from 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 older men and stuff like that. You're saying that the definition of love maybe changes over a period of time as a as a perceiver. I think love is a very uh, is is a very large emotion. It's an emotion that is felt at different levels and in different forms. Um, for me, the highest form of love is respect. You know, sure. when you deeply admire someone. that is real love then of course there are different kinds of love you know the love that you want to possess the love that you don't care about possessing but you feel anyway and i think fans have that a lot their love is not the one kind that is of wanting to possess or own or have quite unconditional at times yeah it is it's almost like um, they don't care who says what they it's just very very rock solid and it's unchanging fantastic breakups when was your first breakup like and how was your feel feeling with the same boy who I had my first crush on 16 or 13 16 so 13 one did you even find out that i had a crush ha, on because 16 one actually it actually happened we held hands and it was very exciting okay. <laughs> i don't know i think he was he was young and i was young and he suddenly felt that there was um, there was too much seriousness at that age because you know we being a 16 year old idyllic idealist girl i had imagined that we would get married and i would have his children and i was committed to him at 16 how many months some months. months or something it did went i think we exchanged letters for about a year okay and uh, we held hands about five times <laughs> that was enough hands, that's that was enough okay. for me to decide that this is it i have to get married to and like i said i was an idealist i was yeah. that girl with tinted glasses who thought ki haath abhi haath pakle mat shaadi karna hai <laughs> okay and how did how did you deal with the breakup i was heartbroken i thought my world had come to an end 
I was actually hurt for a long time. I think one of the things that propelled me to leave Hyderabad and come to Bombay and participate in the Femina Miss India contest at that time was the fact that I was heartbroken and I just wanted to get away. My God, I think you know, you know, happened. That's what exactly what I was discussing with Zayed. That's the interesting time, things about breakups, heartbreaks. Breakups propel you into your professional space, or or you want to do something. You it's do, not do just your professional space. I think they give you a window of opportunity to discover yourself and uh, your your needs and your desires and what it is that you want to do with your life. I think it's fascinating. And the funny thing is that while you're broken up and while your heart is hurting, you think that you're never going to feel good again. You're never going to meet anybody who's going to make you feel good again. Somebody sent me a message the other day saying, do you even know what a heartbreak is? You feel like you're dead. And I was like, I know it. We've all felt it. Sure. And we all feel it at different magnified levels. But the beauty about a breakup and it happens in most cases, is that it is one of the biggest stepping stones to yeah. discovering a truth yes, that is something that perhaps a happy state of mind would never help you discover. Definitely. You know, what happens is many a times when, when, when you're going through a breakup and after that uh, you're trying, just came to Mumbai for Femina Miss India and stuff like that. In a way, what, what you do after a breakup is an escape as well to just go away from uh, the, the breakup, the, the pain that the breakup Absolutely. has caused. I think the first thing you're doing when you have a breakup is you, you're seeking a change of scene. You're seeking an environment that will help you feel better. Sure. And will help you move on. And Mumbai did that for me, you know. <laughs> now I laugh at myself, I think I was ridiculous. But I'm glad I felt that. It gave me the confidence to move out and for the first time in my life, choose to live in a city uh, that I never lived in, uh, be independent, uh, go out there and do what I believed was right. And uh, thank God my parents supported me. Of course, the first, I think the initial reason why they let me go for the contest was that is your Zindagi changed after, after Femina Miss India? Oh, totally. I call it my paradigm shift. I think what that contest did was it made from a, from a girl who was a regular college going 17 year old. I came to the contest and I turned 18 at the contest. It changed everything, Faridun. It made me it gave me independence. It gave me huge financial independence. It helped me realize a lot of priorities in life. It gave me the opportunity to help my parents and be there for family and friends. And I think the most wonderful thing about it was that it gave me the opportunity to help, to be in a place that I could help. And that was amazing. So that's how you just learned about yours in the gi. That, that's what the lessons that you've learned in, in yours in the gi in many ways.